Gluten sensitivity. Can it be healed? Can it be cured? Can you have a gluten sensitivity and do your diet well and do your diet right and then recover from that gluten sensitivity and then start eating gluten again? That's one of the biggest questions we probably get via email at Gluten Free Society. And those of you, uh, again, who are new to the show, if you don't know what Gluten Free Society is, glutenfreesociety.org. Make sure you go give us a visit. You can get access to our free gluten-free survival kit. You just got to give us your name and email, and we'll send that free survival kit to your inbox. So, glutenfreesociety.org, sign up for the kit. But, big question we get asked, gluten sensitivity. Can you heal from it? Can it be healed? Can it be reversed? What can be done to reverse it? And so, um, I'm going to start the show by hopefully not bursting anyone's bubbles too bad, but the answer, very simply, is... No, not true gluten sensitivity. And what I mean by that is gluten sensitivity, well, let's define that because you've got celiac disease, you've got gluten sensitivity, you've got gluten intolerance, you've got wheat allergy, you've got other grain-based allergies. So let's define first and foremost what gluten sensitivity is. And um, that way it's, you'll understand a little bit better about why I say no to this. So, let's just draw a little more here. Start with clean. Okay. So, we're going to abbreviate here. Gluten sensitivity. Then you have allergy. Then you have intolerance as being kind of the three areas where we get overlap and confusion in what people think about when they think about gluten sensitivity. And then there's really, there's one more, and that's celiac disease. It's important that you understand that gluten sensitivity can cause celiac disease. Everyone with celiac disease is gluten sensitive, but not everybody that has gluten sensitivity will develop celiac disease. So these two terms are not used interchangeably. They can't be, they're not synonyms. In essence, again, everyone with celiac disease is gluten sensitive, but not everybody with gluten sensitivity will develop celiac disease. Now, can celiac disease be healed? It can be healed, and how do we heal celiac disease? Well, we gotta go on a gluten-free diet. So in order to heal from celiac disease, you've gotta go on a gluten-free diet. Now. If you heal the celiac damage by going on a gluten-free diet, can you then start eating gluten again because your gut is healed? The answer is yes, but if you do, you're going to end right back up with the celiac damage. So again, I understand that if you're celiac, you can heal the damage from the celiac by going gluten-free, but you cannot start eating gluten again once you've healed that damage because you're just going to recreate the damage if you do. Think of it kind of like diabetes. If you're diabetic and you quit eating sugar and you start exercising and then your diabetes gets under control and you control it well and then you want to start eating sugar and not exercising again, what's going to happen? The diabetes is going to come back. So I want you, those of you who have a diagnosis of celiac disease to understand that. You don't just heal your gut and get to start eating gluten again. That's not how it works. You have to keep gluten out of your diet indefinitely. Now, there's also allergy and intolerance. So let's kind of define what these mean. An allergy is really defined as an immune response. And so most people, when they think of an allergy, they think of an acute allergy, also known as an IgE response. And so this would not, there's actually no such thing as gluten allergy because gluten allergy in and of itself really is oftentimes mistaken as a wheat allergy. So they're not the same thing. Remember, wheat is a type of grain. Gluten is a type of protein found in all grain, whereas wheat is just one type of grain. So a person can be acutely allergic to wheat, acutely allergic to corn or barley or rye or oats or rice or any of the other grains, but it doesn't necessarily, just because they're allergic doesn't necessarily mean they have gluten sensitivity. In other words, you can have a gluten sensitivity 
You can also have an allergy. They're not necessarily the same thing. You can actually have both. You can be gluten sensitive and you can also have allergies. So you could be gluten sensitive but also be allergic to wheat. You could be gluten sensitive but also be allergic to corn. In essence, you're entitled to more than one problem here. That's part of the take home message. But an allergy is definitionally different than gluten sensitivity. So again, we're going to define gluten sensitivity here in just a minute, so bear with me. So an allergy is an immune response typically measured as a result of a doctor running an IgE test. This is either a skin prick test or a blood test that doctors will commonly run. The problem is, is, is they don't run the allergy test for gluten per se. They run that allergy test for individual food items or for individual environmental items. So if you've ever been and you've had this testing done, as a matter of fact, let's just poll the audience. How many of you here listening tonight have had patch test, skin patch test, allergy, or had your blood drawn and had the doctor measure IgE. Again, this is typically done only for environmental or food-based substances. So for example, commonly um, the doctors will measure an IgE and they'll measure for wheat or they'll measure for dairy or for soy or for some basic food um, or food item. They'll also do environmental, so they'll measure for things like dander and for oak pollen or for ragweed. So again, environmental, outdoor, outside types of allergies. And so that's what's classically defined as an allergy. Understand that it's, what I'm talking about here is acute allergies because there's another type of allergy that is referred to as a delayed allergy and it's not the same thing. They're, they can't even really, they shouldn't even really be put in the same category. They're, 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 they're different enough that they shouldn't be considered to be in the same category. Whereas, that's an A, whereas a delayed allergy, the window of reaction for an acute allergy is zero minutes to three hours, meaning a person has one of these types of acute responses when they eat the food. They usually will have heart racing, sweating, heart palpitations, breaking out in hives, their lips might swell, the throat might constrict, they might have watery, teary, itchy eyes, they might start sneezing or coughing. Those are acute symptoms. Usually with zero minutes or three hours, up to three hours, that's going to be classified oftentimes as acute, whereas delayed is three hours to three weeks. And so again, this is still not the same thing as a sensitivity. This is just a delayed allergy response. So we've got this much broader, much longer window. So if those of you out there that are listening are doing like a food diet history or you're keeping like an elimination diet, it can be very tricky and very challenging to navigate this three hour to three weeks window of whether or not you're reacting because of something you ate last week or because of something you ate in the, within the last meal. So food elimination diets work really, really well for identifying acute reactions, but they work horribly for trying to identify a delayed reaction. So again, Allergies can be delayed, allergies can be acute. If you really want to differentiate the difference, you have to have your doctor measure them both. If they're not measuring them both, then what ends up happening is you get this very confusing report. You potentially eliminate the foods that they were testing you for and you don't feel any better because you have delayed allergies that weren't tested for, so you're missing part of that equation. That's what happens to a lot of people that actually come to see us at Origins Healthcare. So again, delayed three hours to three weeks, it's a type of allergic response, but it's a delayed response. So again, an allergy is an immune response, whether it happens immediately or whether it happens in a delayed fashion, it's still an immune response. So there's parts of the immune system that are viewing that food or that item as an enemy of you and mounting an immune response or an immune attack. Then we have the last one here, which is the intolerance. Now an intolerance is more to do with an inability to digest. It's not an immune response. It's not an immune reaction. So we get this, you've ever heard of somebody with a dairy intolerance or a lactose intolerance where they eat it and they get gas and they get bloating. It's because they can't digest it. So what's happening is that food, that food item ferments in the GI tract because the bacteria start trying to digest it for you and that creates the byproduct of a lot of gas and bloating and discomfort. It can cause diarrhea. So intolerances are not the same thing. They are the capacity or the incapacity or inability to digest the food. And the most common, uh, the most common talked about food intolerance is actually a dairy or a lactose intolerance. It's the sugar found in dairy, it's called lactose, that people have a hard time or can have a hard time digesting. Now, 
Can a person be gluten intolerant? Sure they can. They can have a hard time digesting gluten. Is gluten a protein that is challenging and very difficult to digest? Yes, it can. So a person can be intolerant to gluten and they can also be sensitive to gluten at the same time. Again, the, the, the issue here is differentiating right? whether or not a person just has a temporary intolerance. Intolerances can be temporary because of, in essence, what can cause an intolerance? Damage to the GI tract. So what happens a lot of times is gluten sensitivity damages the GI tract and that leads to the cells in the GI tract not being able to properly produce enough digestive enzymes to be able to break certain foods down and so a person can become intolerant to a lot of different foods. This is actually what we commonly see with FODMAPs. People that actually do better on a FODMAP diet or a low FODMAP diet is because they are oftentimes their history is that they're gluten sensitive they just don't know it they've created over years they've created tons of GI damage that GI damage has led to damage uh, damage capacity to break down foods and and digest those foods and so those foods sit in the gut and they ferment and they rot and they putrefy and they create side effects that are horrendous lots of gas lots of bloating symptoms like irritable bowel syndrome so in intolerance not the same thing as a sensitivity, but a sensitivity can cause an intolerance. So hopefully you guys are sticking with me. Hey, don't forget to check out the rest of the series right here. Make sure you hit subscribe below. And as always, thanks for tuning in.